In this lecture, we will study seven feasts more in detail. Now here, as I told you before, though the seven feast was recorded in Leviticus chapter 23. So don't forget this. Leviticus chapter 23. It, Leviticus was written when? One year after the Exodus. Okay. That is here BC 1445. Exodus took place in 1446. Leviticus, even Leviticus and, and Numbers, that's all the same year. Okay? Deuteronomy was the only one who was written near the death of Moses. So Deuteronomy, out of the Pentateuch, Five Laws of Moses, the last letter, Deuteronomy, was the only book written the same year as the death of Moses. That is about 40 years difference. Okay, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy means the, you know, Deuteronomy, Lomi means the word of God. Okay, now, do you remember when you play tennis or a ping pong? It's a deuce. Deuce means the second. Deuce means second. That means that God has told Moses all the laws and regulations, including Ten Commandments, everything. When? Okay, in the Exodus and in Numbers, in Leviticus, in Genesis, now, 40 years later, right before the death of Moses, God spoke to Moses again that Moses rewrite, okay, review what I have told you. Out of those, how many books? Previous four books. So Deuteronomy is kind of a concluding summary books prior to his death. So Deuteronomy is a very significant, very meaningful book because it's a compiled summary of previous those four books. Are you with me? Okay. Now, here in Leviticus, let me go back here. Leviticus means uh, this particular expression was uh, created in the Septuagint. Septuagint. Septuagint, you know, around uh, BC 200 time. A, Israelis, uh, biblical scholars um, uh, translated uh, Old Testament Hebrew books into Greek, Greek language, where uh, Greek-speaking Jewish descendants able to read the Old Testament. Originally was written by, written in Hebrew language, where those diasporas could not understand Hebrews. They understood Greek word. So, 70, 70 scholars, Hebrew scholars, translated all the Hebrew Old Testament into readable Greek uh, language that we call 70 scholars book. We call Septuagint. Septuagint means 70. 
in 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 the Latin language is seventy. Seventy. So in Septuagint, they translated that Leviticus were Leviticus. Okay, they created that expression, Leviticus. So Leviticus means sits here relating to the Levites. You know, Levites are priest people. Okay, in other words, you priest. In other words, you pastors. Okay, I will tell you. I will tell you. Laws and regulations, ceremonial clean, cleanness, moral laws and holidays and Sabbath years and year of jubilee, including seven feast. See, all these uh, detailed information were recorded in the book of Leviticus to guide Levites, guide priest, guide pastors and bishops. That is what we call Leviticus. So it is not that easy to understand all these particular uh, laws and regulations and feasts. Later in the New Testament, we could interpret all these laws and regulations including seven fists written in Leviticus. Now, in this lesson, we will particularly study seven fists recorded in Leviticus chapter 23. So don't forget that. Leviticus chapter 23. Okay. Is the story of what? Seven fist. Understanding? Okay. Now, now we will study what those the seven fist recorded in here in Leviticus chapter 23. Now here, seven fist. Now you will see seven fist in sequence, in sequence. Don't forget all this. This is very, very important here. Name and date and biblical references. Biblical references and spiritual meaning. In the New Testament meaning. You see here, Passover, Passover here in Leviticus chapter 23 Verses 4 and 5 said this, Passover is the day, July, it's a January 14 in the evening starts Passover. In the evening means, don't forget this, under the Jewish day, day system, 6 p.m. is the beginning of the day. Would you write it down? It's important part here. In other words, 6 p.m. is the beginning of the day. It's different from us. Until the next 6 p.m. Okay? Day counting system is different. So now here, in Leviticus said this, Passover day starts January 14 at, in the evening means in their calendar, January 15th. Are you with me? In the evening means it's a different from our system. Our day starts 12 midnight. Okay? But their day starts 6 p.m. The six hours difference. You have to... Understand this uh, day count the system in a, according to the Bible. Okay? So I just put it down in our day, January 15th. In 
Leviticus 23, verses 4 and 5. Now, that, okay, that Passover, actually, 1,500 years later, Jesus was crucified on the, that particular date, January 15th. Exact day. That's why we call Jesus his Passover lamb. Jesus gave this Leviticus to Moses, and 1,500 years later, Jesus, without any one day, any, any difference, exact day, which he told Moses, he died on the cross. January 15th. On the what calendar? January 15th? That is holy calendar. Do you remember that? That's a holy calendar. Why? That is after the Passover. Okay? In other words, under the holy calendar, Jesus died on the cross on January 15th to satisfy the Leviticus 23. So our Bible is so accurate. Our Bible. That's why we call even Paul calls Jesus is a Passover lamb. Passover lamb. Okay. See, Jesus during the time of the three year public ministries, actually, Jesus celebrated Passover four times. Four times. Okay. Now, at the number four, fourth Passover, he said to his disciples that I want to celebrate the Passover where he and his disciples gathered in the upper room. Okay? Celebrated the Passover dinner. We call it the Last Supper. Okay? That was what? Our, in our term, it's a Thursday evening. Thursday evening. Okay? So he, he performed the Passover meal, okay? And telling his disciples that soon, next day, which is a Friday, which is the 15th. Next day, I will die on the cross to fulfill the biblical prophecies. So he must die the next day. So he was crucified 9 a.m. in January 15th, 9 a.m. So he has been hung on the cross for how many hours? Six hours until 3 p.m. Then three more hours later, 6 p.m. means the next day. Okay? So that day, the next day means, which is ours, it's, it's a Sabbath day. So Crucifixion of Jesus should be completed before 6 p.m. Because starting 6 p.m. will be Sabbath. In Jewish Sabbath, no one can even move around. They cannot even kill Jesus. Everything should be stopped. So prior to the Sabbath, this is 6 p.m., the final death of Jesus should be Completed. So Jesus stopped breathing when? 
3 p.m. Then they were hurried, hurried to carry the body of Jesus down from the cross, okay, and brought him to the tomb prior to the beginning of the Sabbath day, which means 6 p.m. So they were very much in hurry to finish up. Are you with me? Now here. Yeah. From that time on, on Passover, they, Jewish people, began to eat unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. The unleavened bread symbolizes what? Body of Jesus Christ. Okay, unleavened bread. Body of Jesus Christ. Without, see, without yeast means without sin. So now you, God's people, you eat the unleavened bread that in a sinless body of Jesus com to commemorate, could commemorate the death of Jesus Christ for seven days. That's the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, now, here, which is January 16th, starting January 16th, all the way, seven days means, in a, in a spiritual meaning, for, for all the time. It's, okay, until the judgment time here. A symbolic gesture. Okay, now, here, on January 17th, Jesus, okay, January 17th, according to the Leviticus, it's a first fruit, the feast of first fruit. See? Now, exactly Jesus, in, on January 17th, Jesus resurrected as the first fruit of resurrection. First fruit of the resurrection. Isn't it interesting? Now, as I told you before, Noah's ark, Noah's ark, okay, was landed on the Mount Ararat. Here, Genesis 8 4. Okay, now, Noah's Ark symbolizes the body of Jesus. Now, body of Jesus landed on Mount Ararat means that the resurrection of Jesus. In the same way, interestingly, the date, okay, at that time, date was, Bible said, July, July 17th. Remember that? Under the what calendar? Civil calendar. Civil calendar, July the 17th, equals to January the 17th of what calendar? Holy calendar. In other words, Noah's ark was landed on the Mount Ararat exactly the same day as the resurrection of Jesus. Isn't it interesting? That's why we have to understand that calendar system. Without understanding calendar system, you cannot understand. You cannot digest. So you teach your people this complicated, rather complicated, yet you explain step by step, slowly, slowly. Not every Christian will understand this. However, those who are eager to learn 
in the in-depth information, biblical information, they will be able to understand and they will go out and share these biblical uh, informations as many people as possible. They are the reproductive people. They are the multiplying people. You, so you, you, you focus on those multiplying people. Not just, you know, unproductive people. Because the gospel should be multiplied. Before the coming of Jesus, Jesus said in Matthew 25, he said that there are people who have various talents. One talent, two talents, five talents. And Jesus praised those Jesus gave praising those who are multiplying. Okay, their talents who will be joining in the wedding feast. So in these days where the near of the second coming of Jesus, you concentrate on not all Christians, those who are willing to share the gospel as many people as possible. That is your responsibility. Okay? Concentrating on those multiplying people. Not wasting your time. See, all this information is not necessary for all Christians. They don't have to know all this. This is not the, you know, the gospel essence uh, in terms of Salvation. You don't have to know all this in order to be saved. Okay? But those who are willing to share the gospel, they have to know all these implications, which will give them spiritual power. Okay? So, my messages are not just for all general Christians. It is for preordained servants of God who are willing to share the gospel. Just like you. So when you teach your people, don't, don't pay attention to those who cannot understand clearly. Don't just let them, let them just stay as they are. Are you? You, you got my message? Don't spend your time too much. Now here, after the Pentecost, here after the first fruit, how many days after? 50 days after, Moses was instructed that, which is a March 6th, okay, you celebrate the Pentecost. You celebrate the Pentecost. See? 1,500 years later, exactly on the day of Pentecost, 120 disciples of Jesus gathered together in the upper room, experienced the pouring down of the Holy Spirit on the particular day of the Pentecost. Pentecost. That Pentecost experience became the first church okay, appearance. Jerusalem church was planted on the day of Pentecost, which is the beginning of church period. Church period started on the day of Pentecost. In other words, first three here, prior to Pentecost, First three, these are, these are, symbolizes what? This is first coming of Jesus. First coming of Jesus. These feast. Now, here, Pentecost is what? 
It's a beginning of church period. Pentecost. Okay? Now, that is, I have drawn right here, this is a church period. Church period will end the second coming of Jesus. This is a church period. Okay? Now, near the end of the church period, these three, three fist is here. Three fist. Three fist symbolizes what? Second coming of Jesus. Three fist. Trumpet, atonement, tabernacle. When church period is near the end, okay, then trumpet with the trumpet sounds, Jesus will appear in air. Jesus will appear in air. So this trumpet is an airy appearance. Upon that, atonement feast. Atonement is the second coming of Jesus. I will study this later in more in detail, okay? Just to take it. In general, first. That's the second coming of Jesus. Then, tabernacle, which is the last feast, symbolizes millennium kingdom. Millennium kingdom. So now it's very interesting. You see, these seven feasts, Okay, teaches us first coming of Jesus and seven and church period. Okay, and what? Second coming of Jesus. That was instructed to Moses. Okay, now Jesus. Explain the, his disciples all these spiritual implications of seven feast, spiritual meanings, and in the first coming stories here, Jesus actually he actually practiced. He practiced it. Then he instructed, wait until the. Pentecost, then you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where the church period will begin. Okay? Meaning you will you will go out and and and, and share the gospel of Jesus and many many chosen children of God will come to the Lord Jesus, claiming as the, the Savior. This is a gospel harvest period. Church period means. Okay? Now, we are very much the, at the end of that church period where we are expecting the trumpet sounds Now, we are near the Feast of Trumpet. So these three end-time feasts are very much in near of us. 
very much. So it is biblical teachings on the seven feasts. So now, in order to serve the Lord in this particular end time, okay, we ought to understand spiritual implications of these seven feasts. Not only you, but also you ought to share with those who are willing to learn and willing to go out and share the preaching, the gospel of Jesus. It is your mandate. Are you agree with me? Yes. Okay. May God bless all of you. Amen. Amen.